So it seems that the world has become, uh, I think, more united than ever through the shared COVID experience and our global village is about to get even smaller as we connect with two gentlemen who have both proudly represented their respective nations at the highest level of rugby and enjoyed a very successful time at Saracens in the UK where I'm sure the seed would have been planted for their already successful business partnership. Please welcome former Welsh international Dominic Day and English international George Craze. Gentlemen, a very good Good morning. How are you doing? Very good, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us on. Um, it really is great to be able to, to connect with you. But, gents, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the, the hardline stuff first because we've got a lot of young rugby players watching right now. I'm going to start with the important stuff. George, um, please, if you can explain to us how to execute an effective grubber kick. I think we've got a, a lot of young viewers <laughs> who would like to, to know about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, that is that is not my speciality. Uh, I've been I've been banned from kicking, so uh, I, I even got told that if I did it again, I'd have my left foot chopped off. Um, <laughs> and that goes. Which my arse was, I do have a right foot, but. Um, Oh, yeah, buddy, probably, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Of course, what I really want to talk about is the Rugby World Cup final. Uh, I know it's, that's in very bad taste. Is it too soon? Are we, are we allowed to talk about the, the final? Nah, crack on, crack on. Um, look, I, I guess from our side, it was um, it was pretty obviously heartbreaking not to not to win the thing. But um, I, I think the, the the benefit you guys have uh, had as a country, sure. uh, obviously, you guys played unbelievably well. Nice, simple game plan, and, and really stuck to it. And that's what kind of finals rugby is all about. So uh, yeah, massive credit to to the South Africans. Obviously, I know a fair few of them as well. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting uh, training with Vincent Cott when he comes back straight away. But um, look, it, it's 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 something that was an un unbelievable experience, especially the whole Japan uh, experience. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, like I said, fair play to you boys. Uh, and, and likewise to you, your team was absolutely amazing. I think there were many South Africans that thought at the beginning of that final that it was going to be near impossible to beat you. So congratulations on an unbelievable um, tourney. And, and on the Wales side as well, an absolutely brilliant tournament. But of course, you guys have been walking a dual path. You have both now made a, a foray and what seems like a very successful foray into the world of business and you've done it together. What prompted this partnership? Were, yeah, I have visions of you guys kind of mucking down in the, in the second row, having a bit of chat there during training. How, how did the idea come about and what prompted you to actually take this step, start the company and, and move forward? No, yeah, you're right. We, uh, George and I were sworn enemies until we started playing together. We, we, uh... <laughs> we still hated each other. <laughs> Um, now listen, so George and I, um, we sort of started our business lives together pretty much as soon as, as I signed for Saracens and uh, that relationship just, just grew stronger and stronger um, and then we moved into the CBD world and um, you know, it's, been, um, it's been a massive learning curve I guess because it's, um, it's gone from strength to strength and um, you know, it's, it's all based around our own experiences and the benefits that we've had with, with the products and um, you know, we've we're just delighted that we are in the position we are now. And for me, I retired six months ago, and I've been able to sort of transition straight into a business. And um, it's kind of it's it's always on the in the back of of rugby any sportsman mind, I guess, uh, retiring and what you can oh. do afterwards. And for me, it's been um, it's been uh, I feel like absolutely blessed and, and more than lucky to to be able to go straight into our own business. I got to ask, who's who's the better salesman out of the two of you? Oh, it's just definitely this Welsh, this Welsh chap definitely sells more. <laughs> when they can understand him. <laughs> oh, we, play no. of, uh, we play a lot of bad cop, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, you've got, a, you've got a slight height advantage when it comes to intimidating to close the, close the deal. Um, absolutely yeah. brilliant to, to see how successful you can be. We've got to know a lot of our, obviously, our own um, professional sportsmen making that transition through the media here. And I love to hear these kind of success stories. I'm going to ask one last question, George, because obviously you haven't retired yet. And, and having this yeah. mushrooming business, you, you've still made it clear that you've got designs on, on your international career, presumably building on the, the 45 caps that you have what's what's your kind of end goal yeah what, what are your international ambitions uh, another world cup well yeah i guess um for me i want to um i want to really enjoy my time in japan um i think it's something that i've uh, wanted to do for a, a good long while uh, have a different experience 
but then I'm also 30 years old. So uh, hopefully I've got plenty of, uh, le- you know, a-, a lot left in the tank. Um, and there's some pretty exciting things coming up in terms of the, the rugby calendar. So, um, yeah, I-, I will always try to, to play as-, as-, as best as I can, train as hard as I can. Uh, and then I-, I pretty much leave the rest up to um, the coaches who are involved, really. Um, and listen, I hear the, a perfectly executed grabber kick. It isn't seen a lot in Japan, so maybe there is a, there's a gap for you. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is. Uh, Dom, George, thank you so much. Good luck with the future of your company, but it sounds like you're on exactly the right kind of trajectory there. Um, and, of course, with your, your rugby ambitions. And, and most importantly, stay safe during these crazy times, man. Yeah, you yes. too. Thank you so much. All the best. Great to connect with two gents making that leap. Hopefully a lot of South African sportsmen and women were listening right now, proving that while you will need to grow, obviously, your skills as an entrepreneur and a disruptor, if you will, and not just rely on having been a successful sportsman to create a successful company, it seems like it is a very good place to start.